Hello everyone. Today we will be reviewing image-guided percutaneous drainage of abscesses and fluid collections using the trocar technique. We'll begin by reviewing the definition of image-guided percutaneous drainage. In 2010, SIR stated that it is the placement of a catheter with the use of image guidance to provide continuous drainage of a fluid collection using access pathways that may be either transorficial or transcutaneous. Image-guided percutaneous drainage is one of the most commonly performed interventional procedures and is the diagnostic and therapeutic treatment of choice for a wide variety of fluid collections when immediate surgery is not indicated. Abscesses in fluid collections can present in many different ways. Because of this, the indications and contraindications for percutaneous drainage must be evaluated for each case. In general, the indications for this procedure are as follows. Fluid catheterization. Percutaneous drainage can first be used to distinguish purulent fluid, blood, bile, urine, lymph, and pancreatic secretions. It can also be used to determine if a collection is infected or sterile. Release of symptoms. The procedure can be used to alleviate pressure and pain due to the size or location of a collection or to obliterate recurring cysts and collections of sclerosing agents. And finally, Treatment of sepsis. If there is a suspicion that the fluid collection is infected or the result of an abnormal fistulous communication, percutaneous drainage can be curative in the case of simple abscesses or at least temporarily curative in more complicated cases such as pancreatic abscesses. This procedure does not have any absolute contraindications. However, there are numerous relative contraindications, and so the relative risks and benefits should be considered carefully for each patient. These relative contraindications include severe coagulopathy that cannot be corrected before the procedure, hemodynamic instability or lack of a safe pathway to the abscess or fluid collection. This procedure is also contraindicated if the patient is unable or unwilling to cooperate with or to be positioned for the procedure. While percutaneous drainage may be performed in essentially every organ system, it can be contraindicated in complex situations, including procedures requiring drainage routes that transverse the pleura, as this can lead to a risk of pleural effusion, pneumothorax, and empyema, inococcal cysts, as leakage of contents during the drainage process may elicit an anaphylactic reaction, and finally, tumor abscesses, as this may require lifelong catheter drainage. While drainage in these cases can be performed successfully, the procedure will be more technically difficult, have a lower chance of success, and a higher rate of complications. In this video, we will be discussing how to perform percutaneous drainage of abnormal fluid collections via the trocar technique. This method involves direct puncture into a fluid collection by an over-the-needle catheter, followed by threading of the catheter into the collection. Another technique that is commonly used in this procedure is the Seldinger technique, which involves direct puncture into a fluid collection by a sharp hollow needle, after which a guide wire is inserted through the needle, the needle is removed, and then a catheter is advanced over the guide wire into the fluid collection. Imaging is used to guide the percutaneous approach to draining a fluid collection, regardless of which technique is being utilized. Modalities that are commonly used include ultrasound, CT, and fluoroscopy. We will now describe the process of draining an abnormal fluid collection using the trocar technique. CT will be used to guide our approach. Before beginning a procedure, a preliminary CT scan is obtained to visualize the fluid collection. This non-contrast axial CT fluoroscopy of the abdomen shows a loculated fluid collection posterior to the liver. Pre-procedure imaging is also used to determine the safest and easiest path to the fluid collection. The safest path involves the shortest amount of distance to the collection, avoids major blood vessels and organs or bowel, and is in a straight line from the skin surface. It is important to measure how many centimeters you will have to advance the needle in order to reach the fluid collection, as well as the appropriate angle of approach. In the case of this patient, the distance is measured at 6.6 centimeters. 
Once the approach to the fluid collection has been determined, local anesthesia is given using 1% lidocaine. First, a small subcutaneous skin wheel is created by injecting the lidocaine into the dermis. Afterwards, the deeper soft tissues are infiltrated. It is important to apply suction to the syringe prior to injection to avoid accidentally injecting into a blood vessel. Once the patient has been sufficiently anesthetized, make a skin nick a couple of millimeters deep. For this procedure, a multi-side hole catheter was utilized to drain the abscess. The many openings over the length of the catheter provide better drainage of spread out fluid collections. Inside the catheter is a metal cannula which provides rigidity while the catheter is being inserted into the abdominal cavity but can be removed once the catheter has entered the abscess. Position the catheter at the intended entry spot and line it up at the appropriate angle determined during pre-procedural planning. Slowly inch the catheter into the abdominal cavity. As the catheter pierces the proximal wall of the abscess, there is usually a palpable give suggesting cavity puncture. Once the catheter has been advanced to the appropriate depth, unlock the catheter from the stiffening cannula and holding the cannula steady with one hand, feed the catheter into the cavity. The cannula is then withdrawn. It is important to make sure that you do not feed the cannula along with the catheter into the fluid collection. Once the catheter is in position, a syringe can be attached and a fluid sample is withdrawn to be sent to the lab for analysis. Most drainage catheters used in this procedure have an intrinsic locking device to maintain its position. In this case, a pigtail in the catheter was locked by tightening a string which coiled and fixed the catheter tip within the cavity. Once the pigtail has been locked, the string is removed. Additional security can be obtained by externally fixing the catheter to the skin using an adhesive device such as a stay-fix dressing. This can prevent the catheter from catching on clothing and hurting the patient after the procedure has been completed. When securing the catheter, it is important to make sure that it is kept in the position that it would naturally lie. Once the catheter has been appropriately fixed down, it is attached to an accordion drain which provides suction when compressed and provides continuous drainage into a collection bag. A post-procedure image is taken after the procedure is completed. This CT image shows the tip of the catheter in the fluid collection. It also demonstrates a reduction in size of the fluid collection. Overall, complications for image-guided percutaneous drainage are relatively low at less than 15%. However, it is important to be aware of what these complications are. The range of these complications is provided in the parentheses. These include septic shock, bacteremia requiring significant new intervention, superinfection, hemorrhage requiring transfusion as puncture of a blood vessel can cause brisk and severe bleeding that may require blood transfusion, angiography with embolization, or even laparotomy for treatment. Bowel transgression is another potential complication of this procedure as underlying bowel can be punctured during catheter insertion. If there are signs of bowel obstruction or enteric fluid draining from the catheter, steps should be taken to determine the position of the catheter or if there was a peritoneal spill. If bowel communication is found, immediate surgical consultation is required. Finally, pleural transgression can occur during the procedure leading to a pneumothorax or hemothorax requiring further intervention. Thank you for your attention.